Greetings and blessings. This is Queen Weechi here with Queen of Forces Healing Ministries. It's been, whew, I think about two weeks since I made a video. Life has been hectic. So, um, I'm here with another video just to talk. I'm not doing a reading at the moment. But, um, it's Friday, October 30th, pre-Halloween. <laughs> I love Halloween. Uh, but this video is not quite about Halloween. It relates, but before I go into that, because um, before I get off distracted into Halloween, I'm going to focus back on my intended topic, which is ancestor reverence, is specifically in reference to your altar. So I have an altar right here where I am in this room. Um, for my ancestors and if you have any connection to African spirituality any indigenous spirituality and even if you don't you should have an ancestor altar in my personal opinion um, so for my relatives for some of my relatives that have passed on from the physical world I have an altar set up so this video is just a little bit about the importance of it and making sure you take care of it. Because one thing important about ancestor altars is that it helps you stay connected to who you are and to your lineage. And me as a medium, of course, I commune with my ancestors. They speak with me. They show me things. They come in my dreams. And having that relationship with them and building an altar is very important because it's another intentional way to keep our relationship building. It helps also with learning about any family karma, trauma, slash generational curses, whatever you want to call it. Um, learn about those things with the intention to help heal those things. Because a lot of times trauma is passed down from generation to generation. And I know in my own personal family, it wasn't necessarily talked about in a way that was intentional for healing. Like we notice it, call it what it is. Some people call it one thing, some people call it another. But somebody or somebody's has to do some intentional healing so that you will pass down healing instead of passing down trauma. So I intentionally commute with my ancestors and ask them for advice. You know, I ask other family members about the family members I honor on my altar. And I learn more because I know my grandfather, my granddaddy, as I call him, my granddaddy has been really speaking to me a lot lately. He's on my altar, and I have something I wanted to show you all. The reference to him. Here it is. So he's been talking to me, and one thing that he said the other day, I went to the altar yesterday and the day before, and it's important to try to commune with your ancestors on a daily basis. So I went over to the altar, and he was like, I don't like this. You need to, <laughs> you need to spruce this up. And I have been thinking, okay, you know, we're coming up to Halloween. This is usually a time where I discuss a lot about my ancestors with my children. I have them actively participating in doing things at the altar, putting food, or whatever. So it's in my mind anyway, you know, that it's time to basically refresh the altar. And I laughed because on an altar, an ancestral altar, some of the basic things that people have are pictures of their loved ones, if they have pictures. If not, sometimes people write their names down. Some people may have the obituaries, um, just to have some type of identity piece there. Also, spirits, aka liquor. I have gin on mine because my granddaddy drank gin. Um, and water in a clear glass container. Mine is in a clear glass container. Um, candle. 
I have a flamish candle there right now because my altar is in a room where my children come a lot and I have a three-year-old. So I like candles with real flames. I'm not scared to burn candles. I try to be safe with them or whatever. But because I have a toddler running around who also plays in the same room, I want to be careful about that if I'm not here with her. So I have a flameless candle. And that way also, I don't have to worry about you know, turn the candle off or anything. I just let it glow. Um, having that connection, that's fire energy also. Plants is a good thing. You know, fire, water, air, spirit. So you have the water, you have the plants for the earth, you have the flame for the fire, you have the spirit, the um, the the liquor, and also incense. Um, I usually burn frankincense and myrrh on or near my altar. I burn frankincense and myrrh incense all the time. It's my favorite. Have the oil, the incense. Um, there's also resin you can get to burn on charcoal. Frankincense and myrrh is a good purifying um, scent, purifying, cleansing, protective, harmonious. They work together. Frank and myrrh work together. So it's good for meditation as well. It's my staple. Like, I went to the store to get some yesterday. There was only three of these, so I got all three. I'm like, oh, I can't be running out of that. So I do have the oil. If I'm going to put it in an oil burner, um, I can do that too. But so this is another um, symbol for fire and air, if you ask me. So also you can have a white cloth. I'm not going to show my altar. It's very personal. Um, so I'm not going to show it. But I have a white cloth, and I kind of let them guide me as to what I put and where I put it. And just like my granddaddy was telling me, like, he wants me to redo it. And I know, like, I can feel that very clearly. Like, okay, I got to do something different here. So I'm trying to figure out if I need to move the whole thing in another part of the room, in another part of the house, or whatever. But um, there's going to be some changes made starting today. Um, refresh the water, of course. When you come to your ancestral altar, you can pour libation, which is um, usually a liquid, usually water, sometimes liquor, um, also, and call out their names as you honor them, sit and meditate, just give thanks for being who you are and the lessons that they learn that you can learn from, which is another reason why having a relationship with your ancestors at your altar is extremely important. Because, again, back to that generational trauma and healing that, you can commune with them and they can, they will talk to you. They will help you and they will talk to you in a way that you understand. And if you don't, then you can tell them, listen, if you're speaking to me, I don't understand how you're speaking to me. Can you please speak to me in a way that you know I will get? Okay. And they will do that because... If you're honoring people, and it's important to honor people in your family that you know loved you and had your best interests at heart, just because somebody was blood related to you doesn't mean you have to honor them. That's not my perspective. Um, some people may have a different perspective, but again, when you, especially if you're talking about trauma or whatever, I do believe that when people transition from this physical world and they go in the spirit realm, they still learn and grow. And they then can have a different perspective from their experiences on the physical plane so that they could then assist you in improving your life. So ancestors that you know had your back, honor them. You know, I know sometimes people use the, the terms interchangeably, ancestors slash spirit guides. Um, but Depending on your perspective, um, that, those can be different. Um, I think, ancestors, for me, I think ancestors are spirit guides, but not all spirit guides are your ancestors. So, because a spirit guide, to me, is basically an entity that is in, in the invisible, in the spiritual realm, that is here to help you, to guide you, to protect you through your journey. It has your highest and best good in mind so again for me 
an ancestor is a spirit guide, but a spirit guide isn't always an ancestor. And that's not to say one is better or than the other. Um, that's my personal current perspective on that. But it's very personal. Again, so your relationship with your ancestors slash spirit guides is very personal. So you commune with them. And when I do call on my ancestors, there's some who names that I do may I, I may not know, excuse me. And I can say, and those ancestors who have my ben my benevolent and righteous ancestors who have my best interests at heart, who names I may not know. I ask for your assistance as well. So and my my granddaddy, you know, he has certain habits that I don't want to have that have been a part of my family. But I also know that he loved me dearly. He always told me, you know, I've done certain things in life that weren't always the best, but I want you to do better. Da, 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 you know, so being able to commune with him is just the best thing and, and the rest of them as well. And another reason I'm doing this um, video about this is because having that knowing, yesterday I also had a reading for myself. Readers should get readings as well, okay? We all need some, just like psychologists need psychologists, therapists need therapists, readers need readers. So I had a reading yesterday and that was one of the first things that came out was like, oh, your ancestors are like, you need to refresh your altar. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Yep, my granddad told me he sure did. So I was very grateful for that because that lets me know, yes, I did understand correctly what he said or they said. And so that was confirmation, you know, that no, I'm not just hearing things. I have a clear connection with my ancestors. So I really appreciated that. Also, doing that reading, um, part of it was, you know, I, I called them, called their names out. And so... I have an aunt or aunt, as I used to always say growing up. If you're new to my channel watching this video, I'm country, yes, and proud. So my aunt was like, um, I'm not on your altar. Like, why? And I was like, oh my God, she's not. This is a lady that named me, you know, she named me. And she passed probably a little over a year ago. And I do not have her on my altar. So I'm sharing that because it was just a reminder to me that, okay, I'm already being guided by my granddaddy on my mom's side of the family to refresh my altar to do some things differently. And then my aunt on my dad's side is like, and I ain't even there. What's up? Holla. You know? So I'm just grateful because that lets me know she wants to help me and help me more. And that just, that's a lot of love. You know, no matter what, you're loved. And I don't care what human beings are doing. You have some spirit guides, some ancestors that love you and care for you. And I was just reminded of that. The mere fact that she was like, hey, what about me? You know, she didn't do that just because she wants somebody to honor her. I don't think. I mean, of course, she, she should be honored. Um, I know she loved me and still does. And so for me, it was I want to help you and I want to help you more. So having that communication with them, having that sacred space for them that you go there, that you take care of. You know, it's important. It helps your relationship with them. It helps you to build that communion and they can help you. Sometimes you have to help people help you. You know, we do that in, in 3D life. And so in the spirit realm, it's similar. So one thing that was tickle, ticklish to me was um, a couple of weeks ago, um, there was a food giveaway, right? And I went. And there's something in the food box that took me back to childhood. And it was this, something called Scrapple. Why is weird? I remember my parents eating this growing up and my granddad eating this. And I called my mother. I was like, Ma, how about I got some Scrapple in a food box today? 
And I was looking at it. I was like, I'm not going to eat this because um, right now I don't eat pork. I haven't eaten pork in many, many, many years. And I was like, I remember y'all eating this when I was growing up and blah, blah, blah. So I was like, should I give this to somebody? I don't know anybody that eats this. Like, I don't know what to do with it. But I don't want to throw food away. So I just put it back in, in, in the, I put it in the refrigerator. And then it hit me like, I was like, my granddaddy want that. Come on now. My granddad used to eat this. And I'm sure my um, grandmother on my dad's side did too. But I know my mother's family ate this. You know, I was like, oh, hey, Halloween weekend. I'm about to cook my granddaddy this scrapple and put it on that altar. And that's going to be that. You know, so I just thought how wonderful that this came to me. And now I can offer it as an offering to them. So I get tickled by stuff like that. But this video was just to remind you that it's important to honor your ancestors, your spirit guides, um, especially, you know, right about now. Again, for me, this is a time where I tell my children's stories about um, some of my ancestors that's passed on. I call my mom and ask questions, call my dad like, who did this one? Didn't you tell me a story about such and such? You did this and that. And then it teaches me a lot about myself. And then my church, I remember I was telling my children a story about my grandfather a while back. And it was like, oh, your granddaddy was thugged out. Like he took no mess from no one. And so anyway, please take the time, especially now we're having a, a blue moon tomorrow on Halloween which is our second blue moon of the month. Um, second full moon, excuse me. It's a blue moon because it's the second full moon of the month. And the energy is potent. So I plan to stay in a lot over the weekend. We do do typical, I guess you could say, um, Halloween stuff. But um, I'm, my focus is to make sure that ancestral reverence is the main issue so the veil is very thin between the physical and spiritual world right now so spiritual protection is also important as well but communing with your ancestors is such a wonderful time so if you're sensitive to energies you're feeling it you're feeling it um so honor your ancestors commune with them do what feels right because a lot of times they tell you about feelings um, or they might tell you like my granddad, I guess he got frustrated and like, girl, if you don't do something with this altar differently, I'm going to get you, <laughs> you know, of course he's not going to do anything to harm me, but you know, I'm just grateful. I think that is something to be excited about to have a relationship with your loved ones that they will take the time to say, Hey, do this, do that, because that will help me help you, you know? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something helpful from it. Be safe. Take care of yourself and everyone around you, especially your loved ones in spirit. May the force of healing be with you. Ashe.